Welcome back to another edition of Cover One, the Film Room. I'm your host, Eric Turner, joined as always by Nate Gary from WGR. Nate, happy Victory Tuesday leading into a bye week. How you doing, brother? I'm good. Bye week, the key word there. I am uh, just like the Bills, I am actually uh, welcoming the early bye week this year. Uh, headed off to, uh, to Europe at the end of the week uh, for Bills bye week. So I'm looking forward to some... Uh, some rest let's put it that way yeah a little r and r you know early in the season is never a bad thing especially with how well the bills are starting off obviously four and one heading into the bye uh with a big win this last weekend against the titans so we're going to jump into josh allen and his stats to start off uh what are your thoughts on josh allen's play overall from the top uh, against the titans last week well i think eric that it goes to uh I think I think Josh Allen ended up saying it, but his best performance to date. I, I think I'm there with that. Um, in terms of accuracy, um, obviously we're still kind of waiting for that big play, and I would tell people um, that are still waiting for that big play to keep waiting. I, I think that the way that Brian Dable is calling games, um, Brian Dable isn't forcing the big play with his play calls. Um, it, it, I think on the contrary, it's been Josh Allen who's maybe getting a little um, antsy with some of those deep 20 yard balls down the field. And, and that's why you see him pushing sometimes, especially early in the game. But I think um, everything that Brian Dable's doing is setting Josh Allen up for success following the bye week, um, which I really like. But in terms of his performance this week, there's not a lot I could, I could want more. Obviously, I, I don't want him to force that football and have the interception. Um, I still think the third quarter offense coming out of the uh, locker room was stagnant on the first two drives. Yeah. Um, I didn't necessarily love the second to last drive of the game where they end up punting the ball back to Tennessee. Luckily, again, the defense was there to bail them out. But Brian Dable, I thought, called a terrific game on that final drive. Uh, I thought Frank Gore was the difference in this football game. But uh, in, in terms of performance and Josh Allen, man, it's hard to walk away from this one and not like uh, a lot of what he put on film. Totally. And, and I know a lot of fans are worried about those deep shots that aren't happening right now uh, early in the season. And you can see here on the charts from Pro Football Focus that he didn't even attempt a pass over 20 yards. And the issues early on this season is that teams know that the Bills want to push the ball down the field with Allen's big arm, and he hasn't succeeded on passes over 30 yards. Now, if you look at his overall stats from you know 20 to 29 yards, he's actually quite efficient. Uh, those deep crossers aren't there right now. The defenses are playing him a lot better. Um, they're undercutting their routes and making Josh throw up and over, and a lot of times the attempts that Josh is actually uh, making those passes, they're almost like throwaways. They're almost not there. He did miss a couple, you know, that John Brown, uh, deep down the middle throw to, uh, against the Giants, I believe. Um, that one he did miss. He missed a few of them, but a lot, a lot of the times, the attempts aren't really even quality passes, and they're kind of more throwaways. And, and I think that time will come. Now, in, in this game, although he didn't attempt any deep shots here, as you can see, there were plays called. There were check with me calls and shot calls uh, given to Allen, and Allen checked out of them for whatever reasons, um, especially late in the game. And I just posted it on Twitter. You saw him almost get baited into a deep shot when they're trying to run out the clock and he reloaded the play and handed off the gore for a one yard loss now that was a smart play yes they took a loss but guess what the clock runs so you know then you know take a couple shots when they're there and, and work intermediate area when it's there um you can't really complain about that the deep shots will come you know at, as more and more passes are and efficient passes are completed in the short to intermediate areas you're going to see a lot of those safeties creep up and and roll into the box post snap rather than dropping back deep uh, post snap and that's what we're seeing a lot lately and so he's he's taking advantage of the stuff underneath and overall the biggest takeaway from this game was he let the game come to him you know 100%, 100%. You know, he let the game come to him and you know what he took check downs quite quickly uh versus you know tampa to cover so when he saw that middle safety bailing into that deep hole he was just checking it down to gore checking it down yelling even throwing a nice uh hook pattern over the middle to, to knox as soon as that tampa two linebacker dropped out of that area so he was taking that underneath stuff and that's what we need to see from him and he was not taking the big hits when he was holding the ball long he wasn't taking big hits at the end of that so I, that were that those were my major takeaways and they may seem minor but in the grand scheme of his development they're pretty major right nate yeah 100 percent. i think the number you want to see um down at the bottom of the screen there when blitzed on only 10 dropbacks which was really interesting um 
I expected the Tennessee Titans to go after Josh Allen. Why wouldn't you? Um, if you watched the t the uh, the Patriots game the week before, right. um, very different story uh, on, on this particular box. And only 10 pressures, or I'm sorry, only 10 blitzes in that game. And he ends up going five of seven uh, for 33 yards. It's nothing crazy, um, but it's improvement in that area. And, th and that was a key one for me. Um, going into this game as well. And, and I am I was interested to see that they didn't blitz Josh Allen more um, in that football game. But uh, that's just how they defended him. And, and that's how you can beat these defenses is by being accurate on the underneath stuff. So I, I'm, I'm looking for him to take that step um, on some of these deep shots. But I, I think like you mentioned and like, like I had mentioned previously, let it come to him. Uh, you know, it, he doesn't need to force those. He can live in the, uh, in the 10 to 20 yard range. That intermediate stuff will come. And I think too, um, just based on, I think, the infusion of what Tyler Croft will bring this team over the middle when it's him and Dawson Knox in the field, I'm really excited um, for personnel packages that have both those guys in the field. I think the middle of the field um, and the vertical game will definitely open up when Tyler Croft's back in the game. And listen, now that Duke Williams is out there, um, I would be, I would not be surprised to see an infusion of a couple of back shoulder throws, um, throws that, that, that really play to Duke Williams strength, which is letting him go up and get the ball. I suspect that that becomes uh, a bit of a, uh, listen, he played 70% of the play, 71% of the play, something like that. Duke Williams is part of this offense and a big, in a big part of it moving into the rest of the season. I'll be interested to see how they, uh, how they utilize him week, week in and week out. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Duke because he is going to bring an element of, you know, 50-50 ball, contested catches, and really just uh, a guy who can frame the pass. And, you know, his eyes don't have to be up on the ball. They can already be up on the player that's coming to tackle him and whatnot. Um, and a guy, obviously, he could trust. So you can use Duke in the, in the slot a lot, too, as a quasi-type tight end, running those, you know, quick curls, three to five yard depth, um, you know, short crossing routes, and even just out routes that Allen just wants to get rid of it as an outlet and know that that guy's going to catch it and maybe only get a few yards, but he's going to frame it, keep the clock running, move on to the next play. So it'll be interesting to see how they incorporate him more outside of just obviously being a fantastic run blocker. So he's going to add in that department too. So they're, they're going to be able to build some things for him and, and build his role out a little more as the season progresses. And, and you know what? What better time for the bye to come? Because now that he's incorporated and thrown into this offense, gives the staff more time to add some few more wrinkles that are not on film yet. And that can only help your offense as we move forward. So with that said, Nate, let's go ahead and jump into the film and break down some of the good and the bad of Josh Allen versus the Titans. All right, Nate, first throw of the game on the Bills' first drive, first and 10, 12.04 on the clock. And the Bills are coming out with a three-by-one set, nub tight end set into the boundary. And they are running one of Josh Allen's favorite plays, it's a spacing concept. So basically sending uh, receivers to specific landmarks on the field. And Allen initially looks like he is trying to target uh, Beasley in the middle. Um, but he does a good job as the ball snap. You see the rotation from the secondary. You see the deep single high safety actually drops down into the hole. And you're having these two defenders right here drop into deep half. So it's inverted cover two. And you see the receivers hit their landmarks. You're having a couple uh, the receivers uh, on the numbers. You're having Beasley space in the middle. And, you know, the running back and uh, the other receiver right here are spacing wide, stretching that defense and that zone coverage horizontally to open up passing lanes. And Josh Allen does look like he is targeting Beasley here. And that eye discipline, that eye movement does pull Logan Ryan right here, who is probably the hook to curl defender, kind of pulls him to the middle, takes him out of the passing lane. And Allen is able to rip it from the left hash uh, to the far right numbers here uh, on a rope. So really good placement on the ball. So Nate, what are your thoughts on this concept? Um, something we've broken down and obviously a, a throw that Josh Allen is comfortable with. Yeah, really comfortable with. I mean, this is an impressive throw. It may look really easy, but that's just because Josh Allen can make throws like this look really easy. I mean, this is a hash to opposite numbers, 20 yard throw on the on the money um, at the face mask. And that's where it needs to be. Um, any play like this where the ball's at, I mean, traditionally with Josh Allen, we've seen this ball placement be a little high, be a little low, but this is a perfect on the money throw. But what I like more about it, as you mentioned with Logan Ryan, the eye discipline to move the defender away from the throwing lane that allows this to become an easy throw. This isn't an easy throw um, for no reason. It's an easy throw because Josh Allen uses his eyes to bring that defender over to Cole Beasley, which opens up a huge alleyway to make this throw to John Brown. So what this throw is, is a little bit more than what it appears to be, which is just an easy 
you know, hook to curl, pitch yeah. and catch kind of thing. Um, but there is more that goes into it to make this play successful. And it starts with the quarterback's eye discipline. Um, and I think maybe ends with a really, really good throw. But for all together, um, you know, this is a really nice play to start a game to, in the beginning of the game, a nice momentum builder for the offense. Yeah, and you can see prior to the snap, it looks like the, the Titans have obviously several defenders off to the left-hand side. So Allen does slide the protection that way. Now it's it's not a blitz or anything like that. It's still a, a normal uh, four-man rush. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, the protection's covered and, and he can just stand in there comfortably hit the top of his drop and he sees that, uh, you know, Beasley has basically three defenders. You can't see all three of them quite yet, but you see there, there are a few defenders right here closing, closing in on Beasley. And so Allen recognizes that and then just throws it. And there's not much change in his footwork. So this is kind of a, a flat-footed throw right there. But again, he's got that arm talent to make this throw, especially on those landmark throws where he knows where Brown's going to set up. And if he just sees the coverage correctly, he can deliver the throw on a rope. And like you said, you know, good placement. And that allows Brown to frame it and then get a few more yards. And it's a 19-yard gain uh, to start the drive. All right, Nate, next play is a sack by Josh Allen. And it's first and 10, balls on the 50. We're still in the first quarter. And it's a play that we kind of agree that it's probably more on Josh Allen than anyone. But as you can see here, there is there is an argument to be made that he does slide this protection. If you listen to the broadcast angle, he does call 74 protection. And based on their scheme, this would normally mean that Spain and Dawkins and even Morris are going to be working to their left. And you see the cornerback blitz coming off the edge here. And it's pretty obvious, Nate, because it's what we call a cap defender. So you have this nickel corner being capped off by a safety. So that usually indicates that there's a blitz coming off this edge here. And I thought personally watching live on the broadcast that Allen recognized it and changed protection. But as I told you before going live here, I did talk to Eric Wood about it and I'll show you why that may not be the case, but this is still up in the air um, on, on whose fault it was, if you want to place blame. But in the end, uh, I'll let it roll and you'll see the, the corner come off the top edge there. And Allen has a high low to the top with Beasley in the slot and John Brown going in behind him. And you can make the case they are open, especially when you look at the second level to Brown coming across the middle. Uh, he does come clear, but again, Allen didn't recognize it and where that blame goes, who knows exactly, but he takes the sack here. And the thing I do like about him taking the sack here and the game overall was that he protected the ball, ate, ate the play and said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to get sacked here. I'm not going to do anything. I'm too crazy. Just protect the ball and let him roll with it. But what are your thoughts on uh, the recognition by Allen or lack thereof here on this sack? I would characterize this play as a missed opportunity um, because the defense showed their hand just a little too soon, I think, on this play. And I think it really, honestly, it favored the Bills having a positive play had they been able to slide the protection the right way. I mean, you have Quentin Spain right now who's kind of not doing much, and it's yeah. really right up his gap. You'd like to see him move there. Um, but for whatever reason, the communication up front was not made properly, and you have a free rusher. Um, with an offensive lineman who doesn't have a, a primary responsibility. To me, that screams miscommunication, um, and that's likely coming from the quarterback. So on this play, yes, I, I think I do blame. I put a little bit of the blame on Josh Allen. Having said that, the positive in this is right. I mean, I, I, I think that Josh Allen a lot of times on this play and maybe earlier in, in, in the season this year through weeks one through four is trying to take this and run to the right and loses 15 more yards. And instead, I think he just takes the medicine here um, takes the sack and uh, lives to see another down. So, I mean, from that aspect, um, that's that's improvement. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I also think, too, that I'd like to see – I'd like to have him in, in his recognition understand that um, to beat this blitz, even if you can't get it covered up front, um, that you want to throw right into it because he's essentially uncovering a player that should be his hot rate on the play. And, and that's maybe speaking to another – um, I don't want to say alarming thing, but speaking to something else that this team needs to get on better pages with and better um, communication with is these hot reads and these hot routes where I need, I need Cole Beasley to be looking at the quarterback right now, making himself yeah, available. Make that side adjustment, yeah. Right, just make himself available. Allen can change his arm angle, throw this sidearm, just get it out to Beasley as soon as possible. Um, but this, this play from really start to finish was a failure, and it's too bad because it was an opportunity for the offense to take advantage of what I thought was a defense who was a little overzealous in showing this pre-snap. Yeah, there's a lot going on. And this is something that we've covered before, you know, late pressure off the edge. And, you know, although it does show as a, almost like a zone blitz, it is a creeper pressure. So there's only four coming here. But 
you know, that five, if that, that protection slides in the opposite direction like we see here, it leaves that, that fourth man free. And this is what I'm talking about when we looked at it, you know, pre to post snap. And I spoke to Eric Wood about it because he calls 74 protection. And 74 protection would mean that Spain right here and Dawkins would be accounting for this edge rusher and then that corner off the edge. What you see here, the, the issue is that it looks like Allen points the mic out into the middle of the field here. So Morris is not going to be sliding to his left and, and just taking this guy right here. That guy comes across his face as that partial slide occurs right here. You see all four guys sliding to his right. And now Dawkins is only locked on that edge rusher. So that would make Allen accountable for that, that corner. So there's a lot going on here. Again, I don't know where the blame is in the end. What should happen here is yes, Beasley should be the hot. At the very least, Beasley should be the hot. And he should make that, uh, make himself QB friendly. Turn right away. I mean, when there's no one there, just turn right away. Give Allen a shot because that that defender comes free and Allen again tucks the ball. I mean, that's something that he normally doesn't do. He's not even looking to run here. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to eat this. Move on to the next play. Again, small win in that department, but it was crucial in this game when when the game's tight and a, a team that you play doesn't turn the ball over a lot on offense. So. Overall, yes, I do think there was a missed opportunity for at least a positive play, but there should be a lot to learn on this play too from Allen and this offense because this has happened several times this year and last year, and they need to get this straightened out because as good as that Titans defense is, uh, there are there were opportunities for them to to extend a play or even to just make a positive out of play like this, and I, I thought they missed that opportunity like you said. All right, Nate, second and five, 948 of the second quarter. Uh, as I mentioned at the top, we saw a lot of deep shot calls that maybe Allen either checked out of or simply just didn't throw down the field. And this is one of those plays where he wants to push it down the field to, it looks like Duke Williams to the top here, but Bayard does undercut it. Uh, you see him right here, undercut it. So that's taken away on the deep crosser, a deep comeback. You have a, a linebacker screaming out underneath John Brown here and then a corner over the top. And so, you know, with those guys not open, what does Allen do? He simply just checks it down to Gore right underneath. And, you know, this second of five play turns into a third and two. And on that third and two, Allen is able to convert to Beasley. So as you can see, there were times where Allen took what the defense gave him. And this is this was one of those games, Nate, right, where it was kind of boring from Allen aside from a player or two. But that's good. That's good when you have a defense like the Bills do. So what are your thoughts real quick on this play from Allen and the offense? Yeah, listen, I mean, this is a max protect play. You're keeping, what is it, two, four, six, yeah. seven players in on this play. That means there's only two um, really that are breaking it downfield. So this is a difficult play in terms of if you're the quarterback. The defense has this pretty well covered. That's why you're going play action. You're hoping that the linebackers and safeties really bite on the play action fake. They did originally, but I thought the defense did a good job of getting back in position to, to, to defend this play. Yeah, you're right. I mean, listen, this is a really good sign from Josh Allen. Instead of him... Uh, deciding to tuck it down and become a runner and become vulnerable and, and, and as a runner, he checks it down to a guy who gets paid to get to take these hits. Um, and and that's what I like about this play is he he makes this a second or a third and short here in this situation, a third and two, a third and three. That's a win. Yep. Um, and and I think he's starting to understand that better. And listen, I think you and I talked about this. I think right after the game is. Devin Singletary, when uh, his return is is and, and listen, this is nothing against Frank Gore and T.J. Yeldon. I thought they've done a nice job filling in when uh, Devin Singletary has been out with injuries the last two weeks, three weeks. Um, but in but just in terms of the screen game and and Devin Singletary, what he brings in the passing game um, and being able to make players miss sort of uh, in very short space, I think the Bills miss that. And when Devin Singletary gets back, um, Josh Allen checking the ball down is going to turn into some electrifying plays, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's a great point, and we saw those type of plays. Though those outlets, those checkdowns to Singletary turn into big gains. And he does bring a little more pizzazz at that position, especially, you know, when, when checked down to or just, you know, thrown underneath. So good point on that. All right, Nate, we're at the second quarter, 522 on the clock, first and 10 ball on the 40. And probably one of Josh Allen's nicer plays from the pocket. Uh, but I want to start from the top. I want to show you guys that this is actually an alert call from Josh Allen. And here's the route concept. Um, you have a nice deep crossing route from McKenzie in the slot up top dagger concept on the two routes to the very top of the screen but it, this looks like an alert call they're trying to push the ball down the field here on this play um, and you'll see it from a tight camera angle but to the bottom of the screen you see John Brown smoke Malcolm Butler off the snap and of course Brown was you know he finished the game five targets five receptions for I believe 75 yards all in the first half and three out of 
those targets and receptions came versus Malcolm Butler, three for 46 yards, I believe. And he just smokes Butler off the line here. And I think it's a deep shot call. I think this is a go route. You see John Brown's hands go up here. And I, Allen, I do want, I think he wants to hit him down the field right down here. But because of that pressure that we're going to see here from uh, the defensive lineman, Allen doesn't have a chance to set and throw it. So he does manipulate the pocket, step up, climb, and then deliver a, a, a nice pass outside because Brown recognizes that Josh Allen is probably going into scramble mode. So he breaks his route off and becomes QB friendly, as I always say. Good throw and catch by the duo there. So what are your thoughts on this play from Josh Allen? Well, I think it's his best play inside the pocket I've seen from Josh Allen. And the things that I really enjoy about this play are just his awareness, his pocket awareness, his athleticism in that six by six area um, is downright impressive. And if this is something that Brian Gable can, can build on with Allen, and this is something in his game where he can use his athleticism for good, um, I, they're gonna have something really special here because to me, um, this is innate ability. This is not something that you you learn uh, during the summer on the doing ladder drills and footwork <laughs> drills. This is something that's that that you have to sort of just have in you because it's it's something that that you know you're not cognitively doing. It's it's just it's not technique. You know, it's it's instinct and it's it's just stuff that can't be taught. And and on this particular play moving and and creating that additional extra second and a half here allows him and and this is where I want Allen to be eventually I mean this is this is Aaron Rodgers type stuff in the pocket like Aaron Rodgers gets outside of the pocket all the time and but he's in no way a guy that's ever been like a four six guy like Allen is probably right now right like Aaron Rodgers has never been a fast or a super athletic player but where he is really athletic or with his footwork inside that six by six pocket. And, and sometimes he just makes these subtle movements, the Dan Reno type things, where you, you make these subtle movements that, that, that put you in a better position and give yourself a better alleyway to make a throw. And, and obviously the throw is impressive, but to me, it's the, it's the work within the pocket, understanding and keeping his eyes downfield, understanding the rush and where it's coming from around him, and, and, then, and then delivering a really nice throw. I, and, and I, again, I, I do want to give credit to John Brown on this play because I think you're spot on about the, uh, the understanding of where he needed to make himself most available for his quarterback. And, uh, you know, I, I also appreciate the catch made. This is not an easy catch from John Brown um, falling away and, and, and sort of catching this as he goes to the ground. It's an impressive right. play from the receiver. It's a impressive play from the quarterback. And uh, this is something that the Bills really would love to see built on um, the rest of the way. Yeah, and the other great point um, about this play on first down and, and alerting and checking to this more of a deep shot or, you know, a play that they want to push the ball down the field off of play action was that 18 first downs were uh, converted by the Bills uh, against the Titans and 12 of them were through the air. So that, you know, we've talked about how Dable has been pass happy for that matter for most of the year. And on this, uh, in this game, uh, they were able to convert a lot of first downs via the air. And this was just another one of those plays and kind of speaks to, you know, the rapport between Allen and Brown. Uh, but also, as you said, this is a, a really good play from Allen in the pocket uh, of manipulating it. And then, you know, he obviously climbs a pocket here. He's got two hands on the ball. That's money. Then he's setting and throwing. But when I, I let it roll in real time, you know, from the broadcast angle, it seems like he's throwing a rocket, but he actually pulls a string on this a little bit, and it's still pushed down the field, obviously, and with great placement, but he doesn't throw this with, you know, top velocity. Op takes a little something off of it and is able to complete it, making it really catchable for John Brown as he is diving to the ground. So good play from top to bottom um, of Allen and John Brown being on the same page. And, you know, although the, the deep shot didn't work, this is just great work by two guys that have obviously built a, a, a good rapport uh, so far this season. Yeah, and, and Eric, too, just to add on to that, this is a play that I think um, makes you feel better about where they are in that deep portion of the game. Uh, listen, it, these are some of the more difficult throws in football. Those outside comeback routes, 20, 15 yards down the field, those are very difficult throws in the NFL, especially with some of the, the, the athletic and, and talent level at the cornerback position around the league. Um, and I mean, this is, this is a good example. I mean, this game, the Tennessee Titans have um, one of the more underrated defensive backfields in football. Their two starting corners are very good. Logan Ryan, Malcolm Butler, two very good cornerbacks in the NFL. And in this game, 
I thought John Brown had a really good game against both of them. Whenever either of them were, uh, were, were over the top, I thought John Brown did a really nice job of making himself available to Josh Allen. Um, and, and listen, I mean, I think both him and Beasley are on pace for 84 catches this year. That would be that would be something um, to me. If, if, if the, both those players could get to the 80 mark, that means this offense is doing something well. And, uh, you know, these are just the plays that I'd like to see more of. Like, we, we it's always like when I was younger, right? And, and I think this is a good analogy for this is I would you could never clean your room to the best of your ability because if you made your room really clean and your parents knew that you were capable of making your room really clean and every time they asked you to clean it they'd want it to be that clean every yeah. time so you have to you know and, and and for this like a play like this shows that they have the ability and that Josh Allen has the ability to be a really really effective passer from inside the pocket so when he shows plays like this it makes me want to expect this on a more frequent basis and and I think we are getting to a point now we're five weeks in we know Know that the bye week has been big for Josh Allen last year. It, it, the, that little break that he got was big last year. I suspect this bye week is going to be a good learning experience for Josh Allen this year. We want to see more of these plays um, as the season progresses. All right, Nate, 4-0-2 on the clock in the second quarter. It's third and five balls on the 41. And the Bills uh, send out a three-by-one basically to the bottom of the screen, and they have Brown and Beasley to the top of the screen running a high-low combination. Now, the Titans do drop out in the man coverage, so that high-low is really not a good route to the top of the screen versus man coverage. You see it's blanketed pretty well here, especially uh, in the low area where Allen is looking um, right here. You see he, Beasley is going to pivot back out to the field, but that defender, uh, the Titan defender, they have him basically bracketed outside and inside if Beasley were to run across the middle here there's a linebacker to help with the leverage so that's kind of taken away and of course the high version of the high route combination here by Brown is it's it's tight coverage so you see Allen though he is looking to that side on third down here he he wants to work to his you know favorite two players right but there is no one there so now he's got to look to three and number three coming across the middle is Dawson Knox but you see there's really good disruption on Dawson Knox and he's not open so he has to go you know blow right by that coverage so he's going to end up going to probably his fourth option here and that's Duke Williams right here running a little pivot route uh, and you see on the snap they drop a defender to help out again over the middle and then a uh, defender over the top and Malcolm Butler manned up versus Williams so as Williams goes to pivot back outside he uncovers Allen hits him and obviously it's a nice catch and a good adjustment by Williams and you know it's kind of goes unnoticed with the adjustment that he makes there and catches it and is immediately upfield and protects the ball uh, versus Butler, who's obviously going to come and try to make a play on the ball uh, since he was beat. So what are your thoughts on this play? The protection, obviously, was really good here with a three-man rush, and it's one of those plays, you know, the Patriots laid a blueprint down. You want to play man coverage by all means, but not all teams have the cover guys that the Patriots do or the scheme to, to pressure Allen with three or four guys all the time consistently. So uh, this was a play where, you know, Duke Williams hit this may be part of his role in that, you know, between the numbers and hashes um, in, in this offense. So what are your thoughts on this play, Nate? Yeah, eight in coverage. Okay, so this is a defense that is uh, obviously running a zone and they're covering a ton of quadrants. Um, they're rushing three. Allen gets all day in the world. And what I love is, for whatever reason, I, I get – tweets during the game about how Allen's a one-read quarterback. Well, this this should dispel any of that because um, you can clearly see the progression of right to left. And and listen, I mean, without that progression, he probably never sees Duke Williams come open. Um, and, and again, in terms of growth and what, we, what we've been talking about week in and week out is, you know, I think there's probably a time either last year or the beginning of this year where Josh Allen's tucking this ball running no and, and attempting to make a first down by putting his body on the line. And, and instead now he's using his greatest asset, which is his arm strength. And, and right now anyways, his accuracy. So uh, what I love about this play is just him going from right to left, getting to his fourth read. Like he's, he is scanning the field and there's going to be plays where he misses open guys. Everybody misses open players. Tom Brady misses yeah. open players. It's just about the progression. It's it's where do his eyes take him? And, and he as he's reading the defense, his eyes take him to the direct place that ends up opening up. But he needs, you know, three and a half seconds for this play to develop. So um, good good on the offensive line for for not letting a three-man rush with, with what I thought was a pretty lame stunt there um, affect 
uh, the quarterback at all. And, and more importantly, again, on this one is another accurate throw, but one made um, by using his reads and, and understanding where the open guy w was going to get open and uh, delivering a throw and getting a first down on third down. Again, I, I do think that the one thing you could take away with this offense is they have not been bad on third down early in this football season. They've actually been pretty good. The reason being, and if you look at the Browns game, for instance, last night, yeah. you know, the Browns were averaging third and nine and a half yards on third down. That's that's not a recipe for a young quarterback to have success on third down. The Bills are somewhere right in the middle of five and a half, six yards is their yeah. average on third down. That is a huge, huge benefit, but it also, and, and it's a benefit for your quarterback, but it's also a result of your quarterback making smart decisions on first and second down. Yeah, and with a three-man rush like this, being able to hold up versus that, and although, you know, this is a three-plus second snap to throw, snap to attempt play by Allen, but he's still throwing it in that short area, that that really goes to show that, you know, how poised he was in the pocket uh, in this game versus, you know, the New England game last week. So um, good play by the line, good play by Allen of working through his progressions, trusting those five in front of him to hold up versus that pressure or versus that three-man rush, I'm sorry. And uh, again, uh, you know, Duke uncovers outside the numbers and protects the ball and the, the chains are moving. All right, so the clock's running, Nate. We're in the second quarter, three minutes, one second, clock running, first and eight, ball in the eight yard line. Uh, it's the Bills touchdown out of 21 personnel. And I want to show how important <laughs> 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 we, may, we may have covered this on WGR on Sunday leading into the leading into the game. But, you know, it's neither here nor there. But the important part about this 21 personnel is the personnel they're actually using. Obviously, Lee Smith isn't a guy that's typically going to be catching touchdowns in the red zone. And then, of course, the newly activated Duke Williams, more seen as a run blocker, especially in this area, out of 21 personnel. And I want you to watch Josh Allen because he sells this. You see him point to Bayard being in the box right here, manned up basically on Lee Smith. And what that means is that that puts eight guys in the box here versus this run. So what the Bills have to do if they were to run 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 the ball here hypothetically is they would motion Williams down closer so that he can insert and be a run blocker. So the offense and Allen here are really selling that this is a run. And, and when a defense sees that that happen and inserting that receiver, that Z receiver into uh, the run game, they're expecting run here. But the Bills actually run a play action pass in what we call a Y leak concept. Um, they run play action right at Bayard, the, the safety right there. And of course he steps up, nice play action fake. Allen gets his, his bearings here. And then, of course, Lee Smith is leaking out um, into the end zone for the touchdown. Nice touch on the pass from Josh Allen. So let me hear your play, your uh, thoughts on the play call, play design. Obviously, the Bills have been really good in the red zone this year. And, yes, it's taken them, you know, uh, some time. It's, there are some struggles of getting to the red zone. But when they get in the red zone, Nate, they've been really good. And this is one of those plays where the design, honestly, and the personnel grouping uh, uh, as a whole uh, really helped Dable and this offense uh, get into the end zone again. Yeah, and if you look at, at Quentin Spain on this play too, he is a huge factor for those linebackers biting on this, right? Like they're following Quentin Spain to the quote unquote ball on this, yep. right? That that you follow that offensive lineman to the ball and he should take you to where their play is going. And it was a great design from Brian Dable because it 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 forced the linebackers to come up. It looks like Lee Smith is down blocking. Lee Smith comes yeah. free and just wide open and and and, and that uh, that defensive end just fine realizes it's way too late. There's nothing he can do on this play. So from a play design standpoint, it's as good as it gets in the red zone. This is why the Bills have been so effective in the red zone is because of play calls like this and designs and schemes like this. And and what I'll say is that's this is the reason that Lee Smith and Patrick DeMarco are on the field and why people keep you know week in and week out say, why is DeMarco playing so much? Why is <laughs> Lee Smith out there so much? It's because it gives them an advantage. And it, like that's I, I don't know how else to explain it to people other than what those players in the lineup do it forces defenses into thinking that it is a run play and when you can get them over the top on a pass play it looks this open and this easy because of the scheme and the package that that are in the game and you're not going to get the same look with dawson knox there no. you're not going to get the same look with a one running back set it's just you're you're getting advantageous pass looks by by showing the defense run so for, for the people that, first of all, and, and, and just on top of this, Patrick DeMarco's playing 14 snaps a game. It's not like Patrick DeMarco's out there as much as Kyle Juszczyk is in San Francisco. And nobody says a damn thing to Shanahan about yeah. the fullback because Shanahan makes the fullback look like a ballerina out there. It looks so 
pretty when the fullback's out there. And, 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 and there, you see how important the fullback is to the run game, but more importantly, how good it and, and how important the fullback is to the pass game because it gives the offense advantageous pass looks. So um, the, the package on this really leads to what looks to be a really easy touchdown, but the play call creates that and, and it forces the defense up um, and once those linebackers move up, they, they've essentially considered Lee Smith the blocker. That, yeah. that linebacker, 55, just totally lets him on and passes him off. So um, really good play design. Um, I like the throw from Allen, too. Nice high arcing. You know, don't 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 launch one in there to Lee Smith. You Not know. to Smith, Pull, no. That's right. Put one on a bow tie, throw it in there, <laughs> and let him, uh, let him fall over. He's basically a glorified tackle. So. I was going to say, let the lineman in there catch the ball and get a, a, you know, get a fat guy touchdown, as we say. Uh, on the podcast so yeah I, I like this play design and as you said you know having guys like DeMarco and Lee Smith uh, they you know obviously dictate personnel groupings and they they are tendency breakers too because as you said the Bills have run this power run out of 21 personnel probably double digits so far this year so this is a tendency breaker and you can't blame the defense uh, for for biting on this because this is just that good of a play design and I'm glad you mentioned that um, you know, the use of Smith and DeMarco because they've been really good in the run game. And it's nice to reward a guy like Lee Smith with a touchdown. All right, Nate. So third and sixth situation. We're in the third quarter now. Ball on the 34-yard line. And this, of course, is Allen's interception. You see them motion Yeldon out. And the defense checks into a different coverage. And this was just a play, in my opinion, that, you know, Allen had to just throw this away. I don't think there was anyone open on this level concept. It looks like he's initially looking to the bottom of the screen on the high-low concept and maybe expecting a different coverage. I think what he was expecting was uh, a man coverage, uh, but instead the Titans drop out into a eight-man Tampa 2 coverage. So I think he was looking for man coverage here to the bottom, and he was trying to get a, a quick rub route right here to, uh, I believe this is Duke Williams on the bottom right here. But of course, that corner squats and they switch out and it's a Tampa 2 coverage. So that's covered. And uh, Allen is not going to hit the high portion of that route right here, which he probably could have led him, you know, had him come back a little more. But uh, he, he blows by it, whatever. He moves on his progressions and spins out to his left and simply should just throw it away versus this three man rush because he does spin out basically into some pressure. But what are your thoughts on Allen? Uh, his poison on this play and the overall decision to uh, to throw this ball. Yeah, um, I don't love the decision to throw the ball. Um, this is this reeks of uh, of something that Patrick Mahomes does, right? But Patrick Mahomes uh, shows week in and week out he can make a play like this. Yeah. Uh, and you're not if you're Josh Allen there, you're you're not there yet. Um, and and I get the arm strength and everything else, and and not a lot of players are are, are going to attempt to throw like this. Um, I just right. I, at this point, you you've escaped. You've got a primary defense, two pri three primary defenders right there in your face. There's no running ability. Throw it at someone's feet or throw it into the first row. That's that that that's where I come. Uh, that's where I land on this play. Is um, I'm fine with with his escape on this, uh, escaping um, and 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 getting away from the defender there. But on a play like this, you can't do something to hurt your team. Not only that, but look at the wide receiver spacing. It's terrible. It's so terrible, yeah. It's, it's bad. And it's it's not necessarily Beasley and Knox's fault here. Um, they're trying a little bit to, to find an alley to, to, to make themselves available. But I think you have to understand who you're playing against. You're playing against, again, one of the better secondaries in football. Kevin Byard is one of the best safeties in football. Um, yeah. You can't put this one up for grabs. It immediately leads to a tying touchdown. This is a play that I just... I, I can't forgive Allen on. And, and I need him to understand the situation that he's putting his defense in here in plus territory after they have basically played a perfect game up to this point and asking them to uh, to hold this Titans offense in plus territory is not fair. And I need my quarterback to understand that this needs to go at, at, at you know, fall six yards in front of Cole Beasley, or it needs to go to the first row. Either way, he can't make this play. Um, but again, this is something that I think he'll continue to build on each week. One bad throw in a game compared to four last week, I, I think that's an improvement. Yeah, and you know, I'm glad you mentioned the spacing here because when you go into scramble drill, it's very tough to read what others are doing in real time. And the spacing isn't all that well here. And I do believe that Allen is trying to hit Yeldon, you know, right in this area. And, and Beasley's kind of boxing out his man, Logan Ryan. But it's just a throw you can't make. And, you know, a lot of people wanted to blame Yeldon for not continuing across. I mean, for all we know, Yeldon's thinking this ball's meant for Beasley. For all we know, Beasley's thinking that that ball's intended for Yeldon. 
Um, I do think it's uh, intended for Yeldon, but Yeldon does pull up here and for whatever reason, and obviously Bayar doesn't, and he intercepts the ball, but it's just a play you can't have, um, and it does lead to direct points uh, from the Titans, and obviously, you know, made this a completely different game uh, between the Bills and the Titans. All right, Nate, so we're in the fourth quarter, Josh Allen's quarter, of course. The game's tied at seven. It's third and three, balls on the seven-yard line, and it's Duke Williams' touchdown, and it's a play that if you follow us on on Twitter or social media. It's a play that the Bills have run several times in camp. It's a play that the Bills have run several times in preseason. And let's be honest here. It was a play that Allen uh, executed in the one, I forget which preseason game it was, but he threw it to Zay Jones. Zay Jones saw that safety and he dropped it. So this time they're going to Duke Williams and Duke Williams obviously did a much better job on this play. With that said, let's go ahead and break it down from the top. It is a power run RPO. So you're gonna have the left guard Spain, um, pulling and making it look like a power runs coming. Obviously, Josh Allen is reading uh, the safety here. It's man coverage. So the safety is Kevin Byard on Lee Smith. Again, you have Lee Smith in the game. You have Duke Williams in the game on a tight split. This almost screams like run, right, Nate? So uh, with man coverage, uh, Duke beats the single coverage. Byard is coming down on the run action, which he's supposed to do. And that opens up uh, a nice, set, a nice uh, amount of green uh, behind the second level. Um, and the play fake from Allen, he pulls it and hits Duke Williams. Again, nice play design. And obviously this was good scouting too, because this is what the, they expected to see in the red zone here. Um, and good footwork by Josh Allen. Gets his eyes on Bayard right there. And then he has to swing his hips all the way around, get his feet set with pressure in his face. You see Feliciano getting uh, pushed back on skates right in Allen's face. It doesn't phase Allen. He's throwing this ball as he is being bumped, and he's still able to throw a really catchable pass to Williams for Williams' first touchdown on the season. Brian Dable, man, uh, just <laughs> his red zone play calling is just, it's its really, really top notch. This this is another play that puts the defense in a uh, in a spin cycle. And, and I guess what I mean by that is when you pull on those passing plays, first of all, I love RPO in the red zone. Um, I think if you're going to run it anywhere that uh, on first down and then also in the red zone, you can't really you can't really uh, put put your offense in a better situation to have success with an RPO than in the red zone. Because I think that's really where um, it can affect coverages. And it does exactly do that on this play. And um, what I really love about the play is, is getting Duke Williams involved. And in this is awesome. Obviously, you mentioned that, though. John Feliciano is just getting absolutely worked on a power rush, and it just does not matter um, at all to Josh Allen. This is a really good sign for Allen in the red zone, delivering a really accurate football, quick, decisive, knows where he's going with it, waits till he crosses the face of Bayard and releases the football um, on, on time accurately. And uh, and again, good for Duke Williams. And, and, and this is where I, I thought right from the beginning of the season that Duke Williams could have a ton of value on this football team. It's in the red zone on plays like this. Um, on a one risk one side you know he's a one receiver set to the right but this is the type of play that that Duke could really show value and prove his value on the team and, and I think he'll continue um, to be a big factor in the red zone and, and it wouldn't shock me to, to see Duke Williams with five or six red zone touchdowns the rest of the way here I think he's going to be a big big target for this team in the, in, in the red zone yeah and if you you know you watch the uh, post game presser with Allen he said he saw all he needed to see and as I pointed out that that guy that he needed to bite was Bayard here, and uh, he did. Uh, Duke Williams won the route. I mean, hands down, won the route versus a you know a Dory Jackson who is no slouch as far as man coverage, but he is a guy that has given up several touchdowns in the red zone since the beginning of 2018. Something that I noticed going into this game, but uh, good play from top to bottom. And as you said, I think uh, you know as as tough of it as it's been to consistently move the ball. Um, it's been very volatile. You know, we've had long drives. Don't get me wrong, but they're they're here. You know, here or there, they're very spotty. Uh, but once they get in the red zone, man, Dable and his staff have done a great job of scouting the opponent and giving Allen and the offense the right tools to execute uh, in that area where you know the space is condensed. Things happen a lot quicker. And this was a play. You know, it, it was a bang bang play. Allen got had his you know one read. Uh, Bayard being the safety there and as that guy came downhill Allen just zoned in didn't care about the pressure in his face remain calm and because he's a bigger guy he could throw it flat-footed and being bumped but he still has the arm talent to get it there Duke Williams so I'm, I'm excited to see Duke's role going forward especially in this area of the field 
All right, Nate. So we're taking a look at Josh Allen's uh, adjusted completion percentage from Pro Football Focus to kind of wrap up this break, you know, this breakdown. And uh, I want to get your thoughts on Allen. Obviously, he slipped a little bit over the last couple weeks, and playing against New England will kind of do that to you. But um, right now, he's sitting at ninth in adjusted completion percentage at a 77.6% accuracy percentage. So um, you see 14 throwaways, which is near the top of the league in that. So he's, he's third and throwaways behind Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. And a lot of people say, you know, that why is he throwing away so much? That's a good thing, guys. That's a really good thing. That's that's part of his development of, again, pulling the plug on a play that's not there and, and just getting the ball out of harm's way. And so the throwaways I am not mad about, but and those aren't factored in here into the adjusted completion percentage overall. But I want to get your thoughts, Nate, overall with, you know, where he's sitting at ninth right now. And is that a is that a formula, the game against the Titans and having – this type of adjusted completion percentage is that a formula that the Bills can can live with and with that defense can can win games with and especially in that you know if they can sneak into the first round there and can they win a game with this formula that we saw versus the Titans? Yeah, and well, here's the thing, right? Like most people would argue that they that Josh Allen's probably best suited for a Bruce Arians type vertical set vertical scheme passing offense right and right and, and I think that eventually the the offense that Brian Dable wants to run does have more vertical concepts but right now he's kind of being asked to be a game manager and 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 I think with how good the defense is I think that's fine um and if he can exist as a game manager that that should bode very well for the Bills because I don't think many people when you when you think about Josh Allen you think okay this is a guy that that can be a game manager in fact no he's quite the opposite of that so I, again, I, I want to keep going back to the fact that I do think the deep shots and the deep plays are going to come. It's just a matter of remaining patient because the more you take the short passing game and, you, and you're and you successful at it, the more defenses are going to have to pay attention to it, rotate that second safety down into the box, and eventually you're going to get some some cover zero looks. Mm -hmm. And I and I think he got some couple, couple a, a few cover zero looks uh, in just zero blitzes against the, the New England Patriots. And I, and yeah. I expect to see more of that as the season moves along. And to me, that is the primary area Josh Allen can get the deep passing game going is when they give you cover zero looks, you need to be able to do what Matt Barkley did and just toss up a nice, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be 70 yards downfield, but a nice go route or a nice nine route up the sidelines, 30 yards, float it and let John Brown go and get it. That's where the deep passing game is going to, I think, start from. And it's going to be when teams run these cover zero blitzes at Josh Allen, he needs to have the opportunity to just throw it up and give his guys an opportunity to go get the ball. So um, right now as a game manager, he's actually played better than I thought he'd play as a game manager. He needs to stop turning the ball over, obviously. Um, the only but, thing uh, holding the offense back, to be honest. That's exactly right. It, it really is the only thing. Because here's the thing, and I mentioned this in post game. It's weird to me that the Bills are doing the difficult things and, and doing it rather easily. And what I mean by that is they're driving the ball 75 plus yards, 10 plays, six minutes, eight minutes. They're doing the difficult thing, which is driving the length of the field. What they're having trouble doing is converting when defenses give them a short field. When an opposing offense makes, you know, throws an interception, the Bills get the ball back and they're going three and out inside, you know, opponent territory and end up having to punt on 40. So, like, to me, when you look at the context of what, where the offense is struggling, they're not struggling. A lot of people might argue yards don't matter. And I think for the most part, that's right. I mean, yards don't matter if you're not scoring, but I think yards can tell a story and what the yards and, and yards per play are saying is this is a decent offense that's being hurt by turnovers. They're beating themselves. And I think eventually once this offense, I mean, again, two, one starter other yeah. than Josh Allen is returning from this offense from last yeah. season. One. And they just traded away the only other real layover from last year. So this is a completely new offense. And through five games, the fact that they're beating themselves, I think, is is, is probably part of the course. I think you would expect an offense that has doesn't have a ton of playing time together is going to struggle a little bit. I think once, after the, once they get this bye week, once they get a, a, a nice matchup like they will against the Miami Dolphins, these are games where I think that you can gain some confidence as an offense. I, I think once they stop beating themselves, they're going to be a dangerous top 15 unit yeah and i talked about the turnovers i mean they are ranked 28th in football outsiders dvoa turnovers per drive 28th just think about you know how much better this offense would be if they weren't turning the ball over and a lot of those turnovers obviously are related to josh allen and his ball security uh you know we talked about protecting the ball when he is about to be sacked and obviously just a dumb turnover we saw one versus the titans and i was worried about that because knowing mike Vrabel. And knowing his personnel and 
obviously just seeing the week prior what his uh his mentor did to josh allen i was worried that we were going to say see a similar game plan and i think we did see a similar game plan but again the titans as good as their secondary is and they didn't they don't have the front seven guys to execute um those contain rushes with you know the van noise and the jamie collins they don't have those guys underneath to do what the uh the patriots did to josh allen so i i saw I saw Josh Allen extend a lot of plays, especially on those three and four man rushes. And, you know, he got the time that he needed, whereas he wasn't getting it uh, versus the Patriots. So not every team's going to be able to do what the Patriots did to Josh Allen. So, you know, the fact that Allen was able to come out on top and be efficient against that similar scheme and that similar uh, game plan was, you know, it was good to see. And most of all, he checked it down. He got rid of the ball. And, uh, you know, that would, to me was the biggest thing I wanted to see, especially going against, as I just said, you know, a similar scheme and personnel um, from the Titans. So uh, overall, I thought it was a good game. I think that the deep ball passing game will come. I think he's fine in that 20 to 29 yard range, but they're not getting those deep shots uh, to Foster. And part of the reason is because Foster is not playing and he hasn't really found his niche yet uh, in this offense. So I think that'll, that'll come. And I think this buy comes at a good time. Obviously, they got to heal up. A little bit and I, I do think they'll be all right and obviously having a singletary back is going to add a little more juice on top of inserting duke williams as well and foster uh, for that matter so i think overall the offense through the basically the first quarter of the season has looked really promising i think there are a lot of things they can build upon uh, but i do think that the offense is better suited to josh allen and his weapons right now and now we just need to start building on those looks those bad looks and those bad decisions that allen made now can he learn from them and we see that you know he can we, we've seen that he can but he's got to execute it more consistently so with that said nate let's wrap this up where can everyone find you on social media at nate geary wgr and uh i've got a written piece coming up at wgr 550 this week uh i will also be making a couple more podcast appearance this week as well so yeah, yeah. Uh, busy week but uh headed into the bye week it's uh, as to be expected after after a while enjoy a nice weekend away from uh from football so uh yeah you can find me at eight degree wgr and uh looking forward to uh to to our next breakdown which will hopefully be a very a lot of good things to break down against the dolphins <laughs> i would i would hope uh josh allen has had the dolphins number early in his career and uh, that is a, a bad football team yeah that's uh that should be if there's any game on the schedule that should be a win the hands Five down one is gonna feel really good eric i i, I feel <laughs> like I, I feel like we can say it at this point point that it should be a five and one uh after after the bye week and after they play miami at home and then they have two more home games uh, i'm really looking forward to, to how far this thing can go eric I, I mean you know this morning on wgr uh, it was howard that said 13 and three and i i think Ooh. i don't think i'm quite there yet um but uh there it, it's not hard to go through the schedule and find 11 or 12 wins and uh i can't remember the last time i said that about those teams it's set up really well for this team to make the playoffs not even just sneak in it's set up really well uh, based on the schedule and the way this team's playing right now and how they're a team. And that's one thing that this regime has always preached from day one is they want to build a, a correct culture and, and, and a team. And they're playing that way. You know, there are times where the offense, you know, is moving the ball and scoring on in red in the red zone and carrying the defense. And the defense is just they're playing lights out. And that's why Josh Allen's play needs to be more consistent and more stable. And something that obviously we're going to be breaking down the entire season. You know, we're going to take a week off, obviously. Enjoy your vacation, Nate. Safe travels. And uh, we'll catch you in a couple weeks here at Cover One, the film room.